I could say I'm one of the first indigenous activists to discover or maybe to use a particular video as an approach. Basically, what pushed me to go to that is all issues around misrepresentation. There's been a lot of uh, fake news. There's been a lot of, you know, um, uh, intentional narratives around what we do as indigenous people. There's been a lot of media coverages that not really take into account the relationship we have with our natural resources. They've been talking on land as a, as, as a standalone, talking about culture as a bad thing, talking about the systems as old and backward. You know, so um, for the last five years now that we've been using PV uh, as an approach, we have been able to register a lot of success. One is we've been able to tell a story from our perspective uh, and the stories we make the stories we document it's also been able to go through several levels and we've been able to engage up to united nations secondly we've also been able to build internal solidarity on issues because we do um, screening in, in the communities and communities that stimulate in discussion internal discussion on how we can tackle issues from within the community and thirdly, is that uh, the participatory video has also been able to build that capacity. We've trained people to be able to use the cameras. We have a pool. We have the Maasai voice now. And we have been able to establish even on the other side of Kenya. So we now have two um, um, media, media or uh, video collectives that are working on specific issues of the Maasai community across the border. And, and lastly, is that uh, the PV is helping us to connect with other regions. Uh, I've screened our videos in Canada, I've screened in West Africa, I've screened in Northern Africa, and now people know that this, this is a revolutionary process that can connect people, not necessarily by visiting each other, by sharing electronic uh, information or digital information, that helps to build that courage of uniting.